to start, uh, I want to review that all the time you look for greatest common factor first. And then as a second step, you look to see, do I have a binomial, which is two terms, or do I have a trinomial, trinomial, not monial, uh, if, which is three terms. If it's a binomial, we're going to look for difference of two squares. If it's a trinomial, now we're going to look to see if we can factor it as um, two binomials. And this is a little tricky. Uh, this is what we've been spending the last few days on, and now we're going to expand this a little bit. So our efforts today are focused on this, um, and this is called ax squared plus bx plus c, where we now have a leading coefficient for the x squared. So let's take a look at some examples, because really what it comes down to is this is going to be a, a great deal of trial and error. Um, I know that's not what you like to hear, but that's really the best way to make this work. Sometimes it may seem like I get it quicker. It's entirely because I'm experienced and you're just going to have to build the experience with a lot of practice. I cannot emphasize enough that this takes practice. So if at any time you want to pause this video and do one on your own, do it. Uh, you're going to start your homework a lot easier if you do that. If you just kind of write this down mindlessly copying, then you're not going to get out of this what you need to, and it's going to be a, lo a longer experience later. Okay. I'm going to separate this into two binomials because I know I can't take out a greatest common factor. 2x squared plus 7x minus 9 has nothing in common. I also know it's not a binomial. So what I look at is I look at, well, the same pattern as before. I have something times x plus something times x. Now, 2x squared has to come from 2x times x. Why does it have to come from 2x times x? Because we still need to have middle terms of 7x, and those need to add up. So one of these is going to be a 2x, and one of these is just going to be an x. The 9 now, we have an option. We can either make that 9 and 1, or 3 and 3. If it were 3 and 3, the way this is done now, 3 times 2 is 6, um, or sorry, th 3 times, this 3 times, sorry, 3 times x is 3x, and 2x times 3 is 3x. That could not get me to a 7. Think about it. If I multiply those and I get 6x and 3x, regardless of if I add those or subtract, to, subtract those, that will never get me to a 7x of a middle term. So we're going to erase all that, and now I'm going to try a 1 and 9. 2x times 9 is 18, 1 times x is not going to get me to 7. But let's flip the 1 and 9, 9 and 1. Now I have a 9x and a 2x. When you see 9x and 2x, your brain should trigger that that's going to get you damn close to 7x. Yes, I said damn. Um, actually, that's going to get you exactly to 7x. So we're going to put those in a way that we're going to get a positive 7x, which means positive 9x and negative 2x. Finally, we're going to check by foiling. The check is to go first, 2x squared. Outer is negative 2x. Inner is positive 9x, so plus 7x. Last is negative 9x or sorry, negative 9, and that checks. So I'm just going to erase this because our factored form is this. Okay, number 2. See, the problem here is that we don't really have any work that we can show really well. Um, we're really just going to do this by guess and check. Now, I'm going to present some ways that are a little bit more listing, uh, but still going to ultimately come down to guessing and checking. Okay, we're going to try 14x squared minus 17x plus 5. Now, we, uh, we have a leading term that has two factors. And we have a trailing term, the positive 5, that has one set of factors. So I'm going to leave a gap for the x, uh, but I'm going to put a 5 and a 1 because I know that my last is going to be a 5 and a 1. I just don't know whether it's going to be plus 5 and minus 1 or minus 5. Well, actually, I know it's going to be plus and plus or minus and minus. And strictly speaking, because it's there's a negative middle term, I know it has to be minus minus. Um, so we're left with what possibilities do we have for our leading one? Well, let's, let's try a few. Um, I know I want to get to 17, so I can't go terribly large. I can't do like 14 times 5. Because 14 times 5 would give me way too big of a number. That would not never get me close to 17. So let's go 14x, and then this would be 1. Um, that would give me negative 19. 14 times 1 
and 5 times 1. So that's two. That's not going to work. So really what I want to do is kind of split 14 up. I'm going to kind of look at 14 and say, well, I know 14 is also 7 and 2. If I put the 7 with the 5, it would give me 35, and that's too big. So if I put the 7 over here and the 2 over here, then I get positive 7, or sorry, negative 7, negative 10, that's negative 17, that's it. Um, and again, check by foiling. 14x squared minus 7x minus 10x, um, and then net positive 5. For my next example, I'm going to do 10 plus 11x minus 6x squared. Now, I am someone who likes to arrange it with descending order. So if I put it like this, I have negative 6x squared plus 11x plus 10. And now I'm going to want to pull out a negative because I like my leading stuff to be positive. So 6x squared minus 11x minus 10. Now, what I pulled out was a negative. It's really a negative 1. I factored out a negative 1. And I'm going to put that in parentheses right now because that's its own factor. So it's okay to leave that negative out there. Um, and in fact, in my next step, I'm still going to want to put it out there. But now I'm going to split the trinomial into two binomials. Okay, Here's, here we have some lots of stuff going on. And this can get a little crazy. Um, we look at our leading, and that could be a 6x and an x. So I know that 6x squared could be 6x with x. And I look at my, uh, or sorry, 6x and x, or it could be 3x and 2x. I should make those dots. I look at the 6 and I say, that could be 6 and 1, or that could be 3 and 2. Which is it? We don't know yet. But also, I look at the last one, that 10. That could be 10 and 1. That could also be 5 times 2. Uh, I don't know which one that is. So I sort of have to kind of play this game where I pick one possibility and play it out. Um, let's try, and I'm going to show you trying this, kind of has how long this can take. Let's do 6x and x. If I do 6x and x, well, if I try the 10 and the 1, uh, the 10 couldn't go here because 6 times 10 is too big. If the 10 went here and the 1 went here, um, that would be... I could either do positive 10 and negative 6, which wouldn't give me 11, or I could do negative 10 and positive 6, which also wouldn't give me to 11x. Um, remember, we're targeting that middle term, so that's not going to work. 10 and 1 is out. Let's try 2 and 5. 5 times 6 is 30. That's too big. 2 times 6 is 12. That's promising, except that we have a 5, which is going to give me too far away from 11, whichever way, whether we add or subtract. So that won't work. Since 5 and 2 don't work, and since 10 and 1 don't work, 6x and x don't work. So we have to try 3x and 2x. Let's go back to the, to, to the 10 and 1. If I do 10 times 3, that's 30. That's too big. 10 times 2 is a little bit more reasonable, but I still have 1 and 3. Um, this giving me 20 and that giving me 3, that's not going to get me to 11. So 10 and 1 is out. Then we go to the uh, 5 and 2. 5 times 3 is tw uh, uh, 15. 2 times 2 is 4. There we go. 15 minus 4 is 11. I want it to be a negative 15 and a positive 4 to give me a negative 11. So that is a little bit of the trial and error that you can do with this. It, it takes a little bit of time. Yes, you're going to have to want it. You're really going to want to check by foiling um, 6x squared minus 15 plus 4, and then minus 10 to give you the final trinomial. Um, this is an acceptable factored form with the negative 1 pulled out. Something else you'll want to know. I tend to use this notation when I'm grading. Um, I may mark something like uh, CF, which means check factoring, which basically means you factored wrong. Um, and when I say check factoring, I mean you really need to check your factoring. Check it by multiplying back if you're really struggling with it. Okay. Last little tip before we move on to another example, and I search for a bigger marker. Uh, there's purple. Um, the last little tip is uh, this takes time. I mean, this really does. This takes time and practice. This is not something that can come quickly if you've never done this to the extent that we're doing it now. So you really have to, uh, you really, 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 really have to be patient and diligent and do the work on time. Okay, here's our example. 5a squared 
minus 8b. You know what? I'm going to do this, make this a little bit different. Let's go um, 15a squared. Let's do 15a squared b minus um, 3ab squared minus 66b to the third. I'm starting with this one. Uh, anytime you see me hesitate like that, it's probably because I'm trying to put in a greatest common factor. If I look at the whole thing, the 15, the 3, and the 66 are all divisible by 3. So I know I can pull a 3 out, and they all have a b in them. So I can pull a b out. Then I'm left with 5a squared minus, that would be uh, ab minus 22b squared. Always greatest common factor first. Now we're going to try to split up this trinomial into two binomials. Keeping the 3b off to the side. I know the 5a squared is going to become a 5a and an a. It has to. I know that the 22b squared, I'm at least going to have a b and a b, but I need to figure out what the coefficients are. Probably not 22 and uh, 1, because there's no way to multiply that by a 5 and make them subtract or add to get 1ab. Um, again, look at this polynomial and just see the coefficients if you're really having trouble. The coefficients are 5, negative 1, and 20, negative 22. And we're really trying to make it so we multiply to get the 5, multiply to get the negative 22, but add to get to the 5 itself. Um, so 22 wouldn't be 22 and 1, but it has to be so we could, like 2 and 11. Let's try that. Um, 2 and 11, the 2 would multiply by the 5 to get 10, which is going to give me close to 11, which is, you know, one apart. That's going to work. 11b. Again, outer is 10, inner is 11. We want them to subtract to get negative 1. So that means that it has to be a negative 11 and a positive 10. Okay, that works. So I'm going to switch over to the worksheet that you have to do for homework. This is the first worksheet of the AX plus squared plus BX plus C series. Um, and this is the first one that really integrates this into the, the whole process. So I'm going to do the first two and then leave the rest up to you. I just want you to see that this is something that you can do. Um, okay, first one, first check for greatest common factor. Nope, 3, 8, and 11. So separate it into two binomials. I know the 3z squared has to be a 3z and a z. And I know 11 is going to go to 1 and 11. Those are the only factors of 1 and 11. You should be saying 11 and 3 don't make sense because 11 times 3 is 33, and that's too big. So let's put the 11 here and the 1 here. Now we check that see that we can get 8, 11z, and 3z. Yep, those differ by 3. So let's make them, one has to be positive, one has to be negative. Positive 11z and negative 3z give us a positive 8z. It's very common to switch the signs here, so just check by remultiplying that that would work. Okay, next one. No greatest common factor, so we know that 2c squared is going to end up being 2c and c. The 11 is going to be 1 and 11 again, so uh, this time we do want to get to a larger and middle number, so I'm going to put the 11 with the 2 to get to 22, and the 1 there to get, a, get from 22 to 23. A positive sign on the 11 means that they have to be the same sign. Uh, with a minus in the middle, they're both going to be minus, minus. 2c squared minus 11, um, or sorry, minus 22, minus 1, and plus 11 give us this whole thing. So I'm going to stop there and let you finish the rest of this. You're going to get this worksheet tomorrow, too, so you don't have it yet.